followed by the awards presentation. So uh, to start that q and I will invite the filmmakers up uh, three at a time, three or four at a time. So when I clear name, please come up. And then we'll also have you uh, stay up here with us for the length of the Q&A because we will open to audience questions following. So first up, if we can have from anxiety number five, Jesse Foster, from Lost Face, Sean Meehan, and from Greek co-talker, Alex Zarovich. Is Alex here? Oh, there we go. No, you're good. You're good, Kelton. So, uh, Jesse and Sean, both of your films are based on pieces of literature that you've adapted, and Alex, you've taken a, a historical story and, and told. And so, what I'm interested in is what about these stories you wanted to make into a film and why, and then what you think it, it says, and what you want an audience to take away from these. Hello, everybody. Um, for me, uh, my wonderful mother came across this poem by Robin Robertson uh, in 2003, and uh, came to me saying, hey, you know what, this would be a really great uh, idea for a short film. And obviously me at film school uh, 12 years ago, which feels like forever, um, I'm like, mom, come on, you know, I, I'm a filmmaker now, I don't need your ideas. <laughs> but then again, I read the poem over and over, and I, I, I saw this two stanza poem into the, being this visceral, psychological, thriller, uh, dark, violent tale that I just, I, I saw it as a, as a piece that would be a fantastic calling card film. There's no dialogue. Um, in my previous works, it's uh, something I pride myself on as a visual storyteller. And I just love the idea of this, the, the unknown and, and this dark place. And um, so basically, thanks to my mom, this movie was made. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, basically, I just wanted to tell a good story. Um, and it's a bloody good story. Um, and it's Jack London, so it was pretty hard to go wrong there. Um, I like the fable, like quality. Um, I liked the way that the characters, the, the power between the characters kept shifting from one to the other. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it was, it was just to entertain, to be honest. Uh, this film is a poem to uh, where my family is from. Um, my mom and all of my family is from Gerard and the surrounding areas. Um, the original idea was from our family friend, Nora Chapdelaine. Uh, she said, Alex, you need to tell the story of my uncle. Um, and I did some research into it and I was shocked that no one had ever made a film or had done any research on this topic on Charles or any of the other men that are listed in the documents you saw. Um, so it was just a, a way to tell the story because it had never been told before and I thought it was time to honor uh, the veterans and the Aboriginal men that helped uh, win the war. Um, I'd like to invite to the stage Katrina Beattie of Lyft, Benjamin Musgrave of Late Harvest, Kelton Stepanovich of God's Acre, and Levi Hallwell of Metanoia. We're, we're missing, is Benjamin out in the audience? It's me. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, so my question for you four um, is what excites me about your films in particular is the vision, execution, and cinematography. Um, can you tell us about what went into shooting your most challenging scenes? <laughs> it was just faster. He was, he was bragging during that question. I, I didn't even hear it, really. He was just saying how good his film is. <laughs> Uh, most challenging scenes? Sorry? Yeah. yeah. Uh, about what went into shooting them? Um, hmm. Oh, man. I'd say, uh, well, there's a, a few different reasons uh, that made different ones challenging. Um, we were fighting against time. So uh, in Metanoia, uh, probably any time we were shooting around sunset, the scene where the two cars are driving down the street there and one of them is in reverse, with three girls yelling in French. Uh, that one was just like, we didn't give ourselves enough time and we were fighting against the sun. So that one was really challenging uh, for, yeah, kind of the environment and the, the physical world that we were fighting against there. Uh, we just didn't get to take as much time with it as we wanted to. But uh, yeah, we still finished the scene, I guess. <laughs> Real talk. Um, you know, my movie started off about two people falling in love over a coin toss, and it just kind of gradually evolved from there. No, no. Uh, probably the biggest thing that was really challenging was, you know, our movie's about a flood, so you have to simulate a flood if you can't show rising water levels, then what was the point? Um, we shot it in Fort Chip Wand in Alberta, which is just north of Fort McMurray. It's like an isolated community that you can only get to by plane, and due to pollution and other things in the history of time, the water levels are actually dropping dramatically so um we was like this was a race against time ours was like a race against like there's a strong south wind the water's coming in push the cabin now and um yeah so that was probably the, like the, more, the like hardest part was pushing that cabin um i guess one of our biggest challenges going uh was that we couldn't find a location to shoot our air traffic control room. It was just like, we scouted, we scouted, we scouted. We looked at like Watme's actual office. And I knew that if I tried to put it in that room, we wouldn't be able to get the wides that we wanted to get. And my director of photography would shoot me. So um, we decided about, I don't know, what, 10 days before production to build it. Um, and so that was a pretty huge undertaking um, but as a result I like we, we had to make some compromises in other places um, in the script like I didn't get the diner that I wanted because we were too busy dressing the, the air traffic control room but as a result I got to shoot in four directions in that room and I was pretty happy with how it all worked out so um, yeah hello uh Complications? Is that this is a question? Um, what, what went into shooting your most challenging, uh, most challenging scene? Oh sure. Um, I think creating um, everything of um, substance is challenging. Um, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that leaves Dominique Keller of Grandma Learns, Learns to Drive, Kelly Wolfert of Brett Kissel, Stepping Inside the Circle, and Jamie Stewart, and I believe Wojtek Jamerl is here as well, of Stephen Hare in Passion. So all three of you profiled contemporary Albertans in, in, a, in a documentary format. And while, while you know, there's probably not many people in this room that are a senior citizen learning to drive or debuting at the Grand Ole Opry or, or starring a, a classic play for so many years, I think there is something that, that speaks to Alberta spirit and Alberta ideals. I was wondering if, if uh, the three of you could speak towards what you think your subjects represent in terms of who we are as Albertans. <laughs> That's not the easiest question now, is it? Um, first of all, let me say thank you to um, uh, the Calgary International Film Festival for allowing filmmakers um, in the short 
venue to be able to submit our films and have them screened on a great evening like tonight. Um, a, a really great broad range of films from everybody, which is, this is the first time that I've been here. Um, and to see so many different kinds of films in one evening that are all really, really good is, uh, is amazing to me. So thank you, thank you, Calgary. Um, for my film, uh, we had a couple days notice from Brett that uh, we actually were allowed to film at the Opry. They're very tight on controlling their brand. And when it was allowed for us to be there, we did sort of fly on the wall as much as we could and just hoped that something would come out of it. I think when you take somebody who's working so hard to build their career and you get the chance to sit with them and watch them realize that dream, cross that threshold, that the Opry is that finish line and everything can go on from there. When you get the chance to watch that, um, it's pretty amazing to see somebody realize their dreams, like getting a driver's license. Oh boy, how does my grandma represent Alberta? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, my grandma's like a, a, a classic, I think she does represent Alberta and that a lot of people aren't originally from Alberta that are in Alberta uh, making a life here. And she definitely represents, I think, a lot of people from her generation, a lot of women from her generation who, you know, that's a, a pretty scary thing to step into a leadership position for my grandmother and to assert some independence and make some choices for herself. I wish she was still here. She was here earlier. <laughs> um, so, and, and, and I think that Alberta spirit of it is, you know, let's, let's make this happen against all odds. Let's keep working towards our dreams. And, and even when we keep getting kicked down, and you guys saw my grandma get kicked down quite a few times. And, even I was like, oh man, she's never going to get her learners. Um, I, I think that's, that's something that we have here in Alberta, that just like can do, let's make it happen attitude. Yeah. Um, as far as Stephen is concerned, I mean, obviously we showcased him because of his passion. He's done it for 20 plus years now for the, the same role over and over. And so... I guess he represents the passion of Alberta. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just uh, just this kind-hearted, humble guy who, you know, wouldn't ask for a video on him, but he'll get up in front of an audience and do it for 20 years. So <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> So I'm sure everyone's anxious to get towards the awards portion, but we do have time for a couple questions from the audience, if there are any. It's a bit tough to see, but if you right there we go, we got some light. Are there any? Right up there. For Kelton. Uh, that's so not, so that's the first part of the question is about if it's a metaphor for water quality up in the area. Uh, no, not at all. Um, though I will agree that there's uh, definitely a decline in quality of water or quality of air in specific areas. Um, that was not necessarily my intention, but um, the fact that the film is about loss or it's about change, you know, it totally can apply to that. You know, it's, it's definitely about the only constant in life is with change and, and how do you grapple that. Part two. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, let, let's wrap it up there now, and we will now invite uh, all, of, all of you to take your seats as we can get ready to announce the winner of the Alberta Spirit Award. I, of course, would like to say a huge thank you to our 26... Thank you. To our 2016 Alberta Spirit ju jurors, Dean Bennett, Brock Roberts, Trevor Smith, Ingrid Vargas, and Rachel Feldblum-Wood. 
And I'll ask Rachel, Grant's administrator with Bell Media's Bravo Fact Program, to please join us on stage to speak on behalf of the jury and present the Alberta Spirit Award and any honorable mentions. Uh, we're very excited. Oh, go ahead. No, clap. Um, we're very excited to have Rachel in attendance for our Bravo Fact Pitch competition, which happens this Saturday, October 1st, 11 a.m. at uh, the Glenbow Theatre. So please join us for that competition. Uh, one short filmmaking team, many of whom have been Alberta spirit contenders in the past, uh, will vie for a $50,000 investment on their next short film. <laughs> Okay, so the jury would like to congratulate all of the nominees and thank them for a really enjoyable program top to bottom. Um, as storytellers, you each challenged us critically and made this a very difficult decision. The honorable mention goes to Anxiety Number no. 5 by Jesse Foster. <laughs> Jesse, if you could please come up and um, if any of the members of the team are in the audience, please come up as well. And the Alberta Spirit Award goes to Lost Face by Sean Meehan. The jury would like to commend Lost Face for its exemplary execution on all creative levels and taught flawless storytelling. We collectively felt that this film was world class and um, yeah, we just, we were in agreement. It was a, a great choice. Um, yeah, if, if any of the members of the team are here, please come up. Do you guys want an opportunity to say anything? Um, sure. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you to Sif for having us. And thank you to everyone else. You know, I thought your films were wonderful. Um, and thank you to everyone in Alberta. Um, we just kept asking more and more and everyone just kept delivering. So you can't ask for more than that. So. Thank you so much. So both of the jury selections, both the jury selections are included on our Best of Shorts DVD, along with six choices from the Best of Shorts program, two programmers' picks from Carolyn and myself, and the five winners from today's earlier Youth by Youth Cinema program. Those are expected to be available for sale tomorrow at the main uh, festival box office at Eau Claire Market. And we invite you all to join us for an after party sponsored by Workshop Kitchen and Culture and Big Rock Brewery, and thank you to all of our other sponsors and suppliers, and don't forget to vote in the audience award on your way out. Thank you so much. <laughs>